foiled again. Failed chronograph and plucked percussion caps. William Hovey Smith, 2014. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzle Loading, and here we try to get chronograph data for the Super Walker Revolver. I'm Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. Today, we're going to start gathering some chronograph records on our Colt Super Walker. And hopefully we'll be able to get data on round ball loads, 200 grain elongate bullet loads by Kato Ajama, and also his 240 grain bullet. Now I have had problems with my competitive edge dynamics chrono. Uh, in short, I killed it. Yeah, put a bullet through the sensor here, and these things occasionally happen. I've also clipped the screens here several times, so it's time it was replaced. And Competitive Edge Dynamics has come up with a new type of sensor. And these are infrared sensors instead of being optical sensors. I have had mixed reports on whether they would work or not with my old chronograph. Hmm. In short, I may have to replace it. But we're going to take this initial load out there and shoot it and see if we can record good data. Well, we found that the chronograph worked, so we were able to get some data. Now we found with 25 grains of 777 power that the round ball load did 1,032 feet per second. Kato Ajama's 220 grain bullet did 973 feet per second. The 240 grain bullet did 873 per second. And the 255 grain bullet did 907 feet per second. Now that 255 bullet is oversized for this cylinder. So I'll not be shooting it again. Now what we're going to do is work up some 777 loads for round ball. Now it looks like that the round ball load should be about 45 grains of 777 to fill the chamber. So uh, we're going to see how that one works. Should be about right. Yep. Yeah, that got it. Okay, guys, we'll see how we do here. Now, as you see, we've taken the cylinder out of the gun. And we've also taken the opportunity to uh, clean the shaft here, and we'll put a little grease on it as we load it. Well, now that is about to the lip of the chamber, but this powder compresses pretty well, so this may be right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's going to work fine. it over here so you can see it a little better. What we have achieved with our loading stand is a very nice, uniform seating of the balls below the chamber mounts. So this tells us a couple of things. These Uberti chambers are very nearly to the same dimensions, something not necessarily true with replica percussion revolvers. And it also tells us that, yeah, this is about the right load. Uh, this does fill the chambers just about to the mouth, so, uh, yeah, uh, with round ball, there's 45 grains of triple seven. yep, that's about it. So now, we'll put some wax overwads on these, and go shoot. 
This shooting has wound up telling us more about percussion caps and chronographs than it has about energy and velocity figures for the Super Warper pistol. In fact, uh, the chronograph is obviously giving spiritus data. So consequently, I will have to get a whole new unit and will not be able to use the new sensors on the old unit. But I'll have to replace that unit too. Uh, the figures we got range from a high of 1,149 feet per second, which is reasonable, down to 80 feet per second, which is certainly not, but include also an 892 and a 216. Well, I can sort of believe the three figures I got about 1,100 feet per second for this load, but uh, not really. So we're going to have to replace the whole mess. Now, we did get a little preliminary information about accuracy at 50 yards. So there's the target. And in fact, there are all six shots. Uh, there's almost a double hole right here. So they bang, bang uh, right there. So the shot pattern is right about here, which is certainly adjustable. And at 50 yards, sitting right here, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't kill any deer, uh, that's for sure. Now, about the percussion caps. We're using Remington number 10 percussion caps, which fit much better on these nipples. They fit firmer, and when you're walking around, they don't tend to come loose. When I was using number 11s with the first go around, I had one misfire, and it took a second strike to seat the percussion cap on the nipple. One problem with this particular pistol is that it will pluck caps. Yeah! Uh, there is a notch in the hammer here and you can see a percussion cap hanging in that notch. What happens is when you cock the pistol sometimes that cap will fall off and jam in the action here and you don't want that to happen. The way you prevent it is you take liquid well like this and you clean that hammer very well with alcohol and you fill that notch and that will prevent that from happening. So we're going to have to postpone shooting for a while until we get the rest of the chronograph. But now this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Here you can see where I used the liquid well to fill the notch in the left center of the photograph. Now, I am the author of a series of prize-winning books, including Extreme Muzzle Loading, Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing, and all of these are available as soft cover and e-books. I have an eight book ebook series out for 2013 14, including hunting with muzzle loading revolvers, which will feature this pistol. Now, filling the Walker's hammer notch with liquid well can save a hunt. Yeah, it can really do that. And this will let you get more than one shot from this gun. For safe carry, you need to carry on an uncapped nipple. If you own an old competitive edge chronograph and need to replace a sensor, yeah, you have to buy the whole new unit. Now, loads of 45 grains of 3F and 57 grains of FFG are top-end round ball loads for this gun. For info on my books, blogs, and 325 videos, go to my website at www.hovysmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.